20 years after the fall of the Berlin Wall, Brian Hanrahan returns to interview some of the most prominent people around at the time. Our World on BBC World News. In one single dramatic night, the opening of the Berlin Wall put an end to the cruelties of the Cold War. But in the memories of those involved, it was a night of delight, surprise and uncertainty. The regime and tonight the war crumbling fast. Have fun, you want out? Here, Adam, give me a hand. I'm say hi to Axel. We did not predict that it would happen with that suddenness and that uh, rapidity. We had been expecting it to happen, could have happened at any time. It was the Bonholner Strasse in the north of the city that most Berliners hurried to check what was happening. It was here in the past that East Germans with permission to travel were filtered in and out of the country. But tonight, there were no filters, no checks. At midnight, the border was thrown open and the crowd surged through the open gates. This is the middle of the checkpoint. The police are making no attempt to stop people. The gates have been thrown open and thousands of people are pouring over to take a look at a West. In some cases, their first look and the elation is enormous. It's not often as a reporter that you really come across history being made. And it's even rarer that you recognize it for what it is. But that night I felt in my bones that what I was seeing here in Berlin was going straight into the history books. This is where the boundary between East and West Berlin used to lie. Checkpoint Charlie there was the front line in the Cold War. And now it was all being swept away. Since then, Germany's been put back together as a country, Berlin as a city. But putting back together the lives of all those people who were involved, that's been a lot harder. He understand more than he can speak. Mm -hmm. Steffi Ruman and Klaus Kubat were two East Berliners whose lives were turned upside down that night. They lived near the wall and heard the commotion outside. And we looked around and the people around, yes. <laughs> and came oh, and with car, with children, with dogs. And we said, OK, we go and look to the other side. We want to like to have the experience to go this way and we want to go back to our country. You don't want to stay in the West? No, never. I met them 20 years ago as they strolled through the border crossing. Now we are friends and we like to visit them and this is all. And we want to see some uh, musicians and some other things. But this is all. Have you ever been in West Berlin before? No, never. Looked in the shops from and oh. he had big eyes to oh, see really. banjos, beautiful guitars and yeah. But you never wanted to leave the country? No. Ten years ago, I went back to speak to them again. He was too distraught to say anything. She was desperately unhappy. If you were back in 1989, 1990, and voting on what should happen, would you have wanted unification? No. How do you, how do you feel now? Are you are you happy after this time? I'm happy now. I have a garden. <laughs> now more years have settled them. They still can't find work, but they have a new home and they're reconciled with their new country. We learned to live now here in a new system and we have friends over, all over the world, but we love the life here and we have all we need. The old East Germany emerged from the wreckage of World War II. 
first as a Soviet occupation zone, then as a communist pawn in the Cold War. The aftermath of the war left parts of Berlin as an isolated enclave of the West inside communist Germany. For East Germans, it was an escape route. They packed their bags and left. Throughout the 1950s, refugees from the East thronged to camps in West Germany. This was the scene at night on the east-west Berlin frontier. East Germans building up and strengthening the notorious wall. When three million had fled, the East Germans built the Berlin Wall to keep the rest in. It saved the state, but shattered the city. Families, friends, shut off from each other for a generation. Along the borderline, Soviet and American forces stared each other down. It was the first face-to-face -face confrontation of the nuclear age. President Kennedy came to Berlin and made it the dividing line between two competing ideologies. All, all free men, wherever they may live, are citizens of Berlin. And therefore, as a free man, I take pride in the words, Ich bin ein Berliner. Even while the wall was being built, people took extraordinary risks to escape. Some died trying. But down the years, they kept coming, even though the guards had orders to shoot to kill. That's what's left of the wall, which kept back the East Germans. And this is the killing zone. Now it's a garden which runs down to the River Spree which marks the boundary with West Berlin. But back then, if you were seen in here, you could be shot on sight. And that was still happening in 1989. One young man in February was shot dead while trying to reach the West. The wall remained an eyesore and an affront. But by the time President Reagan visited Berlin in 1987, it had become an embarrassment to a new reform-minded Soviet leader. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. A few weeks before the wall came down, East Germany was celebrating its 40th anniversary. And Mr. Gorbachev was an uncomfortable guest of its old guard leader, Eric Honecker. Mr. Gorbachev was ill at ease watching East Germany's threatening military display. He wanted change, and recalls how Erich Honecker ignored him. Erich was just singing along, singing the same old songs, and my impression that he was trying to show that things are okay, things will get better. But he was really out of touch. I understood the situation would be changing. Demonstrations flared up round the country, too many, too big to be put down by force. They had to be appeased. Honecker was thrown out, but that wasn't enough. The wave of demonstrations kept spreading and growing. Hans Mudrow, a leading communist reformer in the Gorbachev mold, joined the protesters. He was now brought into the ruling Politburo and was to be one of the key figures in ending communist rule. We couldn't change anything. We just sat there like stupid little schoolboys. We just had to do what we were told. But it was a blunder on live television that opened the wall and brought down the East German state. It was made by Gunter Schabowski, the Politburo representative, who blurted out details of a planned change to the travel regulations before he was supposed to. And therefore we've decided to invoke a ruling which would allow every citizen of the East German Republic 
to emigrate through East German border posts. Sie ist erst in der Nacht um 4 Uhr bekannt zu geben. It wasn't supposed to be published until 4 in the morning, but Schabowski didn't notice. Und benimmt sich dort in einer solchen Arroganz he went into an international press conference and he was so arrogant, so full of himself. We had no idea what was going on. Crowds rushed to the checkpoints, but the communist leadership knew nothing of what was happening. Woodrow only heard when he got home. It all happened so spontaneously. The defense, security and interior ministries didn't do anything. All the attention created by radio and television fell on the border posts. 